Congress trying to control what we can and cannot say? I think Robbie has something to tell us about that. What's on your radar, Robbie? I do, Jessica. Well, exactly one week ago, Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. appeared before the House Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government. And I wanted to take this opportunity to revisit the matter because I still don't think the mainstream media has properly reckoned with the truth of just how badly they misconstrued RFK Jr.'s controversial comments, a lie that they and their Democratic allies used to delegitimize his testimony. Now, as you may recall, the Republican majority invited Kennedy to testify about the government's campaign to suppress contrarian speech on COVID-19, vaccines, and the virus's origins. A tweet from RFK Jr. expressing doubts about vaccines had been among the first posts that the White House urged Twitter to restrict after President Joe Biden took office in January 2021. Before Kennedy could even read his opening statement at the hearing, Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz attempted to move the panel to executive session, which would have effectively blocked the public from hearing what the witness had to say. When Republicans called for a vote to table the motion, all the Democratic members of the subcommittee voted no. In short, at a hearing intended to probe bureaucrats and politicians' well-documented efforts to crack down on disfavored speech, Democrats played exactly to type. Their first impulse was not merely to disagree with Kennedy's views, but to stop him from uttering them in public. Their stated objection to Kennedy was a comment he had made claiming that COVID-19 may have been ethnically targeted, remarks that were widely seen as anti-Semitic. Delegate Stacey Plaskett of the Virgin Islands said that by inviting RFK Jr. to testify, Republicans, quote, intentionally chose to elevate this rhetoric to give these harmful, dangerous views a platform in the halls of the United States Congress. While Plaskett did not merely criticize Kennedy's comments, she implied that they were not protected by the First Amendment. Quote, free speech is not an absolute, she said at the beginning of the hearing. The Supreme Court has stated that. Hmm. Now, the New York Times, in its recap of the hearing, echoed these concerns, writing, quote, Despite the theater, the hearing raised thorny questions about free speech in a democratic society. Is misinformation protected by the First Amendment? When is it appropriate for the federal government to seek to tamp down the spread of falsehoods? End quote. Those are not, those are not thorny questions. They're not even questions. Of course misinformation is protected by the First Amendment, unless it veers into defamation or fraud, which are both narrowly defined legal categories. The modern Supreme Court has never ever validated the idea that speech expressing incorrect ideas is unprotected by the Constitution. If it had, the Times' own speech right now would be in jeopardy. Indeed, the New York Times' own story about Kennedy's controversial remarks itself contained misinformation. Its opening paragraph described the comments in question as, quote, this is important, this is a quote from the New York Times, a conspiracy-filled rant by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. that the COVID-19 virus was engineered to spare Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people, end quote. Well, the candidate did not, in fact, straightforwardly declare that COVID-19 was, quote, engineered to spare Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people. He didn't say that. What he did say was this. There is an argument that it is ethnically targeted. COVID-19 attacks certain races disproportionately. He also said COVID-19 is targeted to attack Caucasians and black people. The people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese. And he said, we don't know whether it was deliberately targeted or not, but there are papers out there that show the racial or ethnic differential and impact. Now, you can see why someone would raise an eyebrow at the suggestion that the virus even might have been deliberately targeted, but a reporter should report what the candidate actually said. Now, Kennedy, for what it's worth, seems to have been referring to a study by the Cleveland Clinic that found some evidence the virus's genetic makeup could theoretically make certain populations, including the Amish and Ashkenazi Jews, less receptive to it. Now, sometimes scientists have disagreed with those underlying findings. That's fine. And moreover, the disproportionate impacts of COVID-19, I think, are likely best explained by certain populations' overall health, age, access to medical resources. Kennedy's larger point was the government funding of research that creates such viruses is dangerous. In an interview on Rising, the candidate claimed that it never entered my mind that it was engineered directly to protect Jews and injure other people. Unfortunately, the Democrats' behavior at the hearing is part of a pattern Far too many political leaders have urged greater censorship of contrarian COVID speech, especially online. The vast federal bureaucracy, first under Donald Trump and then in a greatly expanded fashion under Joe Biden, pushed private tech companies to censor speech 
that was critical of the government's approach to the pandemic. Both the Twitter files and my own Facebook files show that the White House, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, other arms of the federal government, frequently contacted content moderators for the purpose of jawboning. These pushes for greater content moderation were not just philosophically wrong, that is, at odds with principles of free speech, they were often wrong about the underlying facts as well. One need not co-sign everything RFK Jr. has ever said about the virus or vaccines to admit that the mainstream purveyors of pandemic-related information made grave errors of scientific judgment. For instance, again, the New York Times lead coronavirus reporter Apoorva Mandavilli said the lab leak theory of COVID-19's origins was a, quote, racist falsehood, and she was in good company. The established media's persistent crusade to demonize lab leak dissenters, other than a tiny number of cautiously dissenting voices, did not end until earlier this year after multiple federal agencies finally concluded that a lab leak was more likely than natural spillover. If leading Democratic politicians, government health experts, and mainstream media reporters engaged in some self-reflection about their own role in pandemic-era authoritarianism, they might better understand the appeal of a candidate who is running on an explicit platform of never repeating those mistakes. So I know we've talked about this a couple times on the show, but I just wanted to revisit it one last time. I was reading again the New York Times in particular, their Mm. coverage of the hearing, and again, they they claimed, they attributed him to to him a quote that he did not say, and that he has further clarified on this show and elsewhere, that he was not saying he thinks COVID was deliberately engineered to ethnically affect people differently. We don't even know that it was deliberately engineered. He's saying that the fact that it, that, that some scientists and some scientific evidence supports the idea that it ha- is having a differential impact, that that could be because of the virus's structure. There could be other reasons for it too. But if it is because of the virus's structure, that shows you that you could theoretically make a virus that does that. And that's very bad. And we should be very worried about funding such things. And we should be worried about China doing it, or Russia, or the US, or anyone else. To me, that is a perfectly acceptable general warning against this kind of thing. But they made it sound almost as if it was an endorsement uh, that, that he was endorsing doing that or that he thought it was you know, a nefarious thing that Jewish people were doing or something. The way the media intentionally takes RFK Jr. out of context and makes the case these ideas are dangerous, almost in line with their argument for government censorship, yes. right? RFK Jr.'s testimony on the floor of Congress, how members of Congress were outraged by what RFK Jr. had to say about censorship, how the media, the establishment media, backed up the members of Congress saying, we absolutely need the government to censor such dangerous ideas. They're disproving their own argument by being mad and outraged at JFK. So we have members of government that want to censor speech because people are saying dangerous things. They don't like RFK Jr.'s views. But RFK Jr. has the highest favorability rating among anyone running for public office, so he could very well get elected to public office and become the government. So they agree that because we can elect people to public office that might not have a sensible idea of what views and perspectives are are safe and good and which are dangerous, perhaps it should not then be the government's job of censoring information because people like RFK Jr could be elected to public office and do it in a direction that you might not like. It's this classic case of, you know, what I think our founders warned us about in the Federalist Papers, where they talked about liberty being, you know, a a necessary thing. Faction is the result of us having liberty. And if we are to get rid of these kinds of factions, these people we disagree with, we are to get rid of freedom. Right. And, and, And liberty of speech, freedom of speech being the very first right that they enshrined, mm-hmm. that our, our founders uh, understood the paramount importance of that. And it has been reaffirmed over and over again. Uh, our Supreme Court, uh, you know, you, you can have different views of today's Supreme Court, but I think something all of us libertarians, leftists can a- agree on and appreciate is that we, we have more, from a legal standpoint, at least on paper, an ironclad protection of free speech rights, but they're being chipped at, chipped away at, not even by our legislators, but by these federal bureaucrats and then their allies in the mainstream media who, who are, you know, who are 
reinforcing the things that bureaucrats want done and want said in order to, to provide a pretext or to come out with this idea that misinformation is not protected by the First Amendment. Of course it is. They've never said that it's not because we don't know what the truth is and we have to hear different ideas and thoughts and viewpoints and argue about what's the truth. Sometimes people are really insistent, but they're wrong. Sometimes other people are wrong. Like we, we, it's a collaborative process at arriving mm -hmm. at the truth. It was just as easy as, you know, um, uh, bowing down to the most informed or most central authority, um, then you wouldn't need it. But those authorities are, are fallible too. It's yeah. not God. It's just people. It seems that the anyone on the left who is in favor of this kind of censorship on behalf of the government should remember back. I mean, I think a lot of folks were not alive or polit uh, politically cognizant during the Mac McCarthy era when it was the government's explicit mission to censor leftist ideas. We should all be very wary of government censorship. That was not so long ago. And so I think forgetting how this could be used against leftists and that Cold War era politics of just quelling any, you know, art, literature, anyone expressing ideas uh, that were leftists were people who were fair game to be persecuted by the U.S. government, to be silenced and to be censured. That wasn't so long ago. So this approach to RFK Jr., that's aggressive. You don't have to like what he says, uh, but to be in favor of government censorship because you don't like what one candidate says is a, a really extreme way that they're coaxing people with fear uh, to take away some of their liberties, to be quite honest, which sounds like something you would say, Robbie. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, all right, we'll have more rising in just a minute. Stay with us.